a news program from a native perspective. Whether it's a flag pole raising or whether it's an elders conference, if it's important to the people and I make a story out of it, this is the most exciting, wonderful, fun time of my life. Hello and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. I'm Jeannie Green. Welcome to Heartbeat Alaska, Native News, Native Information, and Native Entertainment. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so very much for joining us. Hello to our good friends across Canada, to our good friends across the lower 48 in America. Hello, Russian Far East, and hello, Alaska. Today, we travel to Southeast Alaska to the village of Angoon, a beautiful village and a beautiful location. I'll be back with Angoon right after this. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Bristol Environmental and Engineering Services, serving Alaska since 1994, a subsidiary of Bristol Bay Native Corporation. Hi, I'm Mark from Scan Home, and we are proud to sponsor Heartbeat Alaska. Scan Home, serving all of Alaska's home and office furnishing needs. Thank you, Scan Home, for making Heartbeat Alaska possible. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Brown's Electric Lighting Gallery. Thank you, Brown's Electric, for your generous support of Heartbeat Alaska. By the Nature Conservancy of Alaska, working with Alaska's rural communities to conserve and protect our natural heritage. Welcome back. We're going to travel to Angoon, Alaska. Angoon is located on the southwest side of Kootsnahoo Inlet. That's 64 miles southwest of Alaska's state capital, Juneau. That's as the seagull flies. Like most southwest villages along the Alaska Panhandle, Angoon can only be reached by plane or water. Can't get me. Can't get me. Home to approximately 166 families and a population around 630, Angoon is the only permanent settlement on Admiralty Island. Angoon is, is a little town by the waterfront and we're on Admiralty, we're the only village on Admiralty, so we always say we're the capital of Admiralty. I would say if you never came to Angoon, 
we haven't seen anything yet. We have eagles that are always uh, flying around. Admiralty, you can look out the windows, you see trees. We're surrounded by water. And if you're on a small boat, you can always rely on seeing whales out here and uh, the guys that fish. You can look across the bay and you see the mountains. And if you're here in the winter, you're lucky to catch some snow. The Clinket Indians, who know Admiralty Island as Coots Nuu, the Fortress of the Bears, have resided on the 96-mile island for thousands of years. An estimated 1,500 to 1,700 bears live there, roaming the drainage areas for sedges, roots, and berries much of the year, but feasting on salmon in August before settling into their dens for the winter. Commercial fishing is the population's major source of income. Approximately 76 residents hold commercial fishing permits. Although commercial fishing is an important economic factor for Angoon, subsistence is equally important. Continuing on with the traditional way of life holds great importance to the culture of Angoon. A really rich tradition, a really strong culture and pride in uh, what's, what's very unique uh, in this world, a, a, a heritage. You know, when people say they're from Angoon, they're, they may be speaking in terms of eight, nine, ten thousand years of being from Angoon. Angoon is one of the strongest native villages in culture. We are probably one of the strongest, in, uh, I would believe, in Southeast because we're um, very native oriented. We live our culture. We still do a lot of lot of subsistence. Um, we still believe in our Indian dance. We we do a lot of potlatch. Although the city of Angoon has a culture that spans thousands of years, many of the elders are concerned with the generational loss of that heritage. As Angoon has modernized throughout the last few decades, the Clinket language and ancient teachings have been left behind, replaced by modernized fishing equipment gas-powered transportation, and a Western influence. The youth have suffered an injustice that they know little of. Many have lost the Clinket language and traditional teachings. Well, I think kids, because of the technology, are looking for more excitement. They're not, they're not happy. A lot of the kids are, uh, um, they're what I call second generation, second era. They don't know who they are, and there's a lot of um, families that do not even speak Clinket in their homes. Sadly, we, have, we don't have as much culture, you know, among people my age. Um, it's starting to come back in the school, the elementary school. Through programs like the one taught by Mary Jean Duncan, children are learning to speak the Pledge of Allegiance in Clinket. Mary's classroom is unlike many in Alaska Native villages due to the unfortunate fact that the Native spoken word has all but disappeared in the education of the young. Basic language and numerical skills essential to keeping this culture alive have been tossed aside by most modern educational systems. But fortunately for Angoon, dedicated professionals like Mary have slowly brought some of those lost skills back to the children. Down in the school is one way to, um, to uh, get them involved in that, to open their eyes to who they are and why it's important to know who they are and where they come from and what their language is. 
this, this kind of program, the Opportunity Kids for Kids, is a, is a self-esteem a builder. I mean, those are the things you have to look at in this town and use every one of them. Although the integration of their native tongue is being taught here in Angoon, there is nothing taught past the fourth grade. Children that are taught the basics of their ancient traditions have no place to go after these teachings are learned. My grandma speaks it. So why do you need to? Because I want to talk like her one of these days. Luckily, due in part by a grant received from the state of Alaska and the No Child Left Behind Act, program activities may expand to after school so that the youth can learn their culture and their language. Yet the community is unable to find knowledgeable participants. So if you are willing to help, contact Phil Miskovich at 907-788-3262. Let's help further the education of these Clinket children. There's a heartbeat loud as thunder. Revolution. I know my daughter. She's just like me. Works for every grade she gets. She thinks I dress like an idiot. And she wishes her chest were bigger. <laughs> She knows people who do drugs. I know she doesn't do them. I know, because I ask. I ask all the time. We at Heartbeat Alaska would like to thank the management and staff of the Kootznahoo Lodge for all their help and gracious hospitality during our stay in Angoon. Located on beautiful Kootznahoo Inlet, the lodge offers the finest local facilities with comfortable accommodations, shared kitchenettes, individual room coffee makers, and showers, all with the best view in the world. And just in time for next spring, a full restaurant and dining area. So when you find yourself in Angoon, come see Albert and the rest of the Kukash family for the best service anywhere. Good morning, Island Air. Island Air has been serving Kodiak Island for over 20 years. With scheduled service and charter service to six different destinations around Kodiak Island, the mainland, peninsula, and up and down the Aleutian chain, Island Air offers quality service at affordable rates. And if you love to fish, Island Air would love to take you there. They offer same-day fly-in fishing and bear viewing trips. So when you find yourself on Kodiak Island, be sure to visit Island Air for your island travels. Support for this program provided by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska. We've been here since before Alaska was a state, and we'll be here when you need us. We're here. We're with you. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska. Heartbeat wishes to thank Haglin Aviation Services Incorporated for making our stories possible. We travel on Haglin Aviation, and we thank you for choosing them, too. Haglin Aviation has been serving Alaskans in the bush for over 20 years. We fly Haglins all the time. Operating with 29 aircraft at eight stations across Alaska and servicing over 100 destinations daily. Haglin Aviation, your ticket to ride in rural Alaska. isn't as much to do. Just try to stay away from things that might cause trouble. Uh, there's never nothing to do. Nothing else to do. It seems that one of the biggest challenges today in villages and small cities like Angoon is that the youth of today find themselves with little or nothing to do. <sighs> some days it can be really, really boring with like nothing to do, but some days we can have something to do and like walk around or something. Massive amounts of Boredom. There's no place to go, there's nothing to do. There's one thing that you can always get, but it's not necessarily good for you. The biggest problem I think with the kids is there's there's never nothing to do. And you, I walk, I have a little beagle, a little Yukon. I go out and walk in, in, in the evenings and uh, the kids, they just beg me to walk the dog. They'll come by, and that, which works out great for me. And uh, you know, you see a lot of kids just hanging out. I think that they're just looking for something to do, and uh, they're good kids. When I was growing up, I never heard of drugs. I never saw alcohol to the extent you see it now. But you see those kind of things in, in Angoon and every place. <clears throat> alcohol and drugs and, 
And there's a lot of influences out there that aren't good for children. They're there, though. That's you, a reality. A lot of people did it once, and then it's like, oh, that's fun. You know, it takes my mind off the other things that are going on. So then they just keep doing it because it makes living in a little town more exciting. Yeah. Through new coordinated groups like the Youth Opportunity Program Angoon, village children have the chance to spend their time in a more constructive atmosphere. I think that with the new teen center here, it provides kids with something else better to do instead of just walking around, being bored, doing drugs, alcohol, or something else, I don't know. But it provides us with something else to do. And I think that with the mandatory study sessions, that's kind of like bribing us to come here, but it's helping us. Yeah, I do bribe them. This is a blackmail type of thing, but it's not hurting them. Doing homework for 30 minutes is not a long time. Um, if they, I've had a couple say, I just can't handle your study session. And I have no sympathy because 30 minutes is not a long time. I've had a lot of kids come in and to their first session and say, that wasn't too bad. And then they go and do what they're going to do anyway. So, you know, really once they experience it, once they come in and do it a couple times, then they're like, okay, I'll do it. Which is good because I know that, you know, one, they're getting their homework done. Um, and two, they're coming here. And I know where they are and they're safe. It's really, it's really important. It gets more teenagers off the streets out there, and mainly a lot of people go out there, but and then again, a lot of people are in town and doing what they want to do, and people out of the team doing what they're doing. And I'd probably say it's one of the best things that happened to Angoon for our teenagers and people like that is a teen center. The biggest thing um, I think is the youth center because we had nowhere for kids to go. Um, if you walked downtown you would see just kids in the front of town walking the streets. It didn't matter if it was raining or cold out. Um, Unless we have basketball games or something like that going on in the community, there was really nowhere for them to go. And right now we have um, the youth center. And it's a place for kids to go. We have computers with internet. We have pool, foosball, air hockey, TV, DVD, VHS player, stereo. We have tables if they need to do homework. We have games um, supervised all the time my home away from home. They work together, they're working with the school. And as far as when I say working together, uh, the discipline and, uh, I mean, if a kid is suspended from school, they're also suspended from the, the program. And there's also mandatory uh, study time that the kids are required to do before they can go in there and play games. Then they, got, they have it set up, they have uh, computers and all that in there, so I, I think it's great. It's an extension of the school is what it is. I think it makes a difference. I hope it makes a difference. Um, I know every kid, and I told them flat out, you know, I know how you look. I know how you act. So don't, don't try to come here stoned, or um, don't try to think you can come in, you know, or you drank a couple drinks or whatever, and fool me. And they don't. So um, I think it'll make a difference because you know, research has shown if they have somewhere to go with activities, then there's less of a chance that they'll do drugs or alcohol. Kids are going to make more mistakes than probably we did. But if they learn from those mistakes, then I think we're okay. 
Heartbeat Alaska chooses the Longhouse Hotel, the official hotel of Heartbeat Alaska. And this is where we choose to house our guests that come from all over the world to spend time with us. And this is where we hope you will choose to spend your time when you come to Anchorage. Choose the Longhouse Hotel, the official hotel of Heartbeat Alaska. For more than 50 years, Frontier Flying Service has been your connection to rural Alaska. Frontier Flying Service, a proud sponsor of Heartbeat Alaska. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by TribalNews.com, the world's most complete source of Alaska Native, Native American news on the Internet. Bye, Dad. Bye, Junior. From generation to generation, the passing down of tradition has been the Native way. You never eat snow because it'll always it'll get you tired. Survival in the Alaska wilderness depends on one's knowledge of ancient Native secrets. Nowadays, we carry this. I always carry it next to your body, water. Purity guaranteed. Aquafina. They do architectural engineering. They design, they survey. John Larson and his crew at Larson Consulting Group know how to work in rural Alaska. Look, this is the best foundation system being built. They're native owned and managed. They do design supply housing and they support Heartbeat Alaska. Thank you Larson Consulting Group for your support. There's a carver here by the name of Ray Peck. And uh, Ray's out in the shop right now working on uh, a couple of totems. So we got some money. Uh, I know Indian Education is one of the programs that's helping pay for it. And I'm not quite sure who else is uh, in on that one. Helping, you know, buy, paying for the logs and painting uh, the time and all that. But uh, Ray has donated just about all his time doing this. So we're very thankful to have Ray. And he's, he's, and he's working great with the kids. So it's not just Ray doing that. Ray's just kind of guiding the kids, and uh, everybody's working on that. It's a, it's a school project there, and, uh, and we hope to have those finished and up by the end of the school year. It's working with their hands, and that's, uh, they're out there carving, and, uh, not only the totems are carving, they're, they're, they're carving all kinds of stuff out there and they're doing these little signs and uh, they're doing their eagles on wood and, and uh, Steve's got them making picture things. And so, and I think in uh, this village is, uh, I think vocational education is every bit as important, if not more important, than a college education. If a student is gonna graduate from high school and stay in the village, I think it's it's just an asset to know a vocation, a carpentry, a electrician, plumber, and we're we're working right now on getting a, a small engine repair uh, course going for uh, boat motors. And we're working on that, and I, I think that'd be a great thing to have out here. <laughs> <laughs> They're making um, necklaces. Some of them are learning to make rings. And um, from there, um, Shken George is doing vests in her classroom. Mary Jean Duncan, who is another teacher, is um, doing different activities, a lot of language. And so I think everybody takes the best part of themselves and applies it to their classroom. Yeah. We're um, collaborating with Indian Ed. I've just put the place together. You don't tie out until you're... And then you go through the two beads here. When you first do it, you're probably going to make a mistake, but that's okay. That's how you learn. This brings the kids into um, doing something for their community and learning about 
um, their culture. And so we're not, tr the program that I'm trying to build is, is not only with the beading, but also the language program. I have a lot of, um, I'm pulling up a lot of um, language stuff. The school has already done a, a great job with the language. wonderful to see the elders of Angoon participating with each other and collaborating to make their culture come alive and keep it going. I think it's absolutely inspirational. Thank you, Angoon, and everyone there for your help in this story. And thank you for joining us. Hello, Key Long and the rest of your staff at Navajo Nation TV5 at a Window Rock, Arizona. And hello to my good friends in the Seminole Tribe. By the way, there are five reservations, Seminole reservations in Florida. Did you know that? I am so glad to be here and so grateful to bring you Native News, and I, I hope that you had a good time today. God bless every one of you, and we'll see you again next week. Next week on Heartbeat Alaska, meet the Bethel Warriors, J-R-O-T-C, and find out what it takes to be part of this team. We wake up at 5.30 every morning. We'd be at the armory by 6. Everybody has to be here. kids from a small village leaving their mark on the nation. We took third place in the nation for our exhibition drill team. Come with us as we take you behind the scenes of the Bethel Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps. Checks out. One, two, three, four, five. You checks out. You checks out. Only here on Heartbeat Alaska.